I'm Chris Berman. Coming up on ESPN, a guy that came out of virtually nowhere last year. Justin who? Justin McCarron, as he looks to prove that 2003 was no fluke. Arizona Cardinals, New York Jets, now. While the teams are out on the field getting loose, the fans are filing in and finding their seats for the game. <laughs> Greetings from Jet Stadium, everybody. I'm Dan Stevens. With me, my colleague, Peter O'Keefe. Peter, this game features a big-time matchup between an elite wide receiver and a defensive back who's one of the best in the league. That's right, Dan, and you've got to figure they'll be seeing a lot of one another today. Santana Moss is one of the premier receivers in the NFL. He's an exact route runner, and that's crucial for an effective offense because it allows the quarterback to scan his receivers quickly and effectively. The lot on the other side of the ball, we've got another top performer, Wayne Starks. He's a highly competent cornerback. He's very skilled at pass coverage. He's got the ability to stick to his man and just deny him the ball for the whole game. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a real dogfight in store for us. Okay, Peter, we'll see how they do once the game begins. But first, the toss of the coin. Not on games here, and this is my week 13 preview for the Arizona Cardinals versus the New York Jets 2012 season. Now, before I get started, I just want to send my condolences and my heart goes out to Javon Belcher's family as well as Cassandra Perkins, his girlfriend. It's a very unfortunate um, situation. I just want people to remember as bad as the situation is and of course um, there are going to be people that <coughs> blame Javon Belcher as he is responsible. Um, at the same time a man ha had to be very very disturbed or very depressed something for these events to unfold. Um, my heart also goes out to the three month old daughter that he's leaving behind. I believe it was the daughter. I'm not 100% sure. Um, again, it's tragic when anything like this happens, and um, I'm sure all the players around the league will be playing today with a sense of um, gratitude that they're still here. And. just remorse for um, what happened and the fact that I'm sure they couldn't do anything to prevent it, obviously. Also, um, I can imagine what Romeo Cornell was going through right now as he was right in front of Javon when it happened, as well as Javon's mother. But as I said, my heart goes out to both families. It's a very, very tragic event. Now, um, to move forward during this preview I'm not only going to be talking about the game that you're watching but also things that have been going on in the NFL this season now for starters as you see the rosters are not updated I unfortunately do not have access to my 2k13 roster file as well as Madden 13 and my PS3 died recently um, but it's in the process of getting fixed. It's just taking longer than expected. <clears throat> now, I started watching football back in 2001. And I even before I started watching football, I was a fan of the New York Jets. Just because green was my favorite color. Um, the reason I started getting into football was because I had some of the earlier... Um, football video games before I had that I used to play um, the football games in demos um, they usually feature the demo of game day and um, me and my nephew would always play that nice run Curtis Martin me and my nephew would always play that and what happened was 
we thought of the possibility and how cool it would be to be able to play longer than the game the demo allows you to and be able to actually pick your own teams and check out the other features and whatnot so when I got some money together I bought um, NFL Game Day 2001 it had Marshall Falk on the cover and that game the graphics were really nice but the game and the gameplay was good too don't get it twisted but it wasn't until I got Madden 2000 that I really 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 got into the gameplay um, I got Madden 2000 because one of my cousins <laughs> basically stole my game and I'm like, what happened to my game? He's like, oh, I lost it. Here, take Madden 2000. I'm like, I don't want Madden 2000. I want my game, which was Armor Core. Um, and at that point, it was just sitting around in my house. I didn't want to play it. I checked it out to laugh at it because the graphics were ridiculous compared to NFL game day. Well, one day, um, I decided to try Madden and actually give it a chance because I was reading some of the features in the back of Madden 2000. And when I really tried it, I was hooked. The running, the way they break tackles, there were so many things that they did far more realistic and far more um, closer to the NFL. And since then, um, I wanted to, I got really into the game and I wanted to start watching in real life. Um, the person that drew me instantly to the Jets was Curtis Martin their Hall of Fame running back who I wasn't sure if he would make the Hall of Fame because throughout his entire career I feel he was underrated and um, since he wasn't one of those loud 70 yard running running backs although he had a couple 70 yard runs in his career he wasn't one of those big play backs he'll continue and continue to get points and then break out um, a couple big plays here and there. Um, he was the reason I was watching football. He, ha, I don't know if you caught the sack that just happened, but I almost completely missed it. But luckily I was able to catch him. That's John Abraham who now plays for the Atlanta Falcons. He had a beautiful sack um, this past Thursday against the Saints. Now, um, as I said, Curtis Martin was my favorite player of all time. I would get excited every time I see him play. Unfortunately, I started watching him play around his fifth year in the league. Um, so I would only read about his former stats and wish that I was watching at the time. But thankfully, in 2004, this actual season right here that I'm playing, um, in 2004, he actually led the league in rushing. Um, oldest player to do so, if I remember correctly, or um, second oldest. But he has had great, great milestones during his career. Um, first 10 seasons, or 11 seasons, he had over a 1,000 yards. He was real consistent, and that year in 2004, he started off with 204 yards against the Bengals. I still have that game recorded, and it was just an incredible sight to see late in his career, especially since I thought I already missed his prime. Little did I know he reached his prime all the way in 2004. Um, the next season, he kind of had a bad knee injury and he never really was back on top, but I was glad to see him have that powerful exit or at least highlight late in his career. Now to talk about the Jets' current season, unfortunately, we are doing horrible, as most of you guys know. Most of you guys probably feel the Jets are the worst team in the league, and blah, blah, blah. But I disagree. There were some times during the season that we did what we were supposed to, and we just didn't bring it all together towards the end. Um, we, it happened against the Texans, the Patriots, even the Seahawks before ran away from us. There were some moments that um, we were playing good and it could have went another way. Most recently, we had the loss against the Patriots Thanksgiving night. Of course, that game, as many of you would say, is a big embarrassment 
to the Jets organization. But as I said, um, you never know what the hell is going to happen in a football game. In college football, it's more it's more of a bigger thing if one team blows out another team that's usually good because it just doesn't happen for years, for years, for years. It, I mean, it does happen, but I'm saying usually some of these rivalries one team has the clear stance over the other when it comes to the record between their games. But with the Jets and Patriots, I felt that we were playing decently through most of the game. It was just those 52, 56 seconds that we lost those three fumbles and somehow each of those fumbles were returned for a touchdown. It was just madness. It was a nightmare. And had those had that first fumble been different and the rest of them not happened, I'm not sure if we would have lost that game. Since those fumbles we scored nineteen points and they scored fourteen, which shows that we're able to hold our own against them to an extent. Of course some of the Patriots were not playing at a top level and probably not even the coaches knowing that they've been won the game all the way in the second quarter but I'm definitely sure that it could have been more of a competitive contest now this quarter is about to end if you've been enjoying the commentary as well as the footage right now I'm playing really good against the Cardinals um, then go ahead and check out the video response below and check out the second quarter where the commentary will continue. Platinum Games. I hope the Jets win today. Let's get it done. Um, as a Jets fan, I'm a firm believer. <laughs> and I haven't lost faith. I believe we can still make the playoffs. Believe it or not. <laughs> we do what we have to do and we win. And everybody else loses. We can sneak our way in. Peace.